Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. When I'm recording this in July of 2021, we're in the midst of a massive outbreak of forest fires in Western Canada. A huge amount of British Columbia is currently a no-fly zone for drones. But how would you know? No TAMs. Let's understand what no TAMs are, how to read them, and how they affect you as a drone pilot in Canada. But first, the most important thing, how to pronounce NOTAM. Is it NOTAM or NOTAM? Who cares? Either way is acceptable. And if anyone tells you you're wrong, tell them to get a life. NOTAM is short for Notice to Airmen and is intended to be a clear, concise, and timely way to notify pilots, usually manned aircraft pilots, of temporary aviation hazards, restrictions, or facility changes at aerodromes. They can range from relatively minor things like lights being inoperative on a tower to radiation releases and military conflicts. This video is intended for drone pilots, so I'm going to focus on NOTAMs that are pertinent to drone operations. Now that's a tiny percentage of all the NOTAMs that get issued, so a big challenge for us is separating the wheat from the chaff so you can fly safely and legally. To jump right into it, let's take a look at a couple of examples of NOTAMs just so you know what you're up against. Okay, what do we see? Bunch of letters and numbers and, oh, a bit of a clue here. Fuel, ya, yeah, not a vubul. And yes, sure enough, that means Bellacoola Airport, which is CYBD, is out of gas. Well, Jet A fuel anyway. Certainly not interesting for a drone pilot, but here's a more interesting one. Blah, 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 forest fire. Bunch of latitude and longitude numbers, blah, blah, blah. All ACFT to remain CLR. Aha, all aircraft to remain clear. But does this include drones? Yes, it does. So this NOTAM absolutely applies to drones. And unless you are somehow authorized to be there, you must remain out of the area. Crucial to know this NOTAM exists or you could be putting fire suppression aircraft and their crew at risk if you foolishly decide to pop your drone up. So how do we find out about NOTAMs? In Canada, the official publisher of NOTAMs is Nav Canada, and they offer a website here that is a pretty simple search mechanism. But what should you search for? You have two options. You can search for your flight information region or FER, Here's the list of fur codes to look for, and here's a map of the fur regional boundaries. If you search by fur, you'll be able to zero in on regional NOTAMs like temporary flight restrictions and dodge the useless ones like broken lights, closed runways, or fuel short shortages. But you will get all of the NOTAMs for the entire region. Alternatively, you can search for a nearby aerodrome. To do this, you can enter either the normal community name, such as Kamloops, or the IKO code, which in this case is CYKA. Yeah, it's the airport code. When you search this way, yes, you'll get all the burned out light bulbs, but you'll also see nearby regional NOTAMs like the forest fires. Either way works fine, except you end up with a long list of gibberish to sort through. Let's pull out the old decoder ring and see how to read these NOTAMs. The format of NOTAMs is an international IKO standard. So even though I'm showing you things from a Canadian perspective, most of this video is also applicable to NOTAMs in other countries. Each NOTAM consists of a header, then up to eight standardized sections. Let me run through these quickly, then we'll go into the details of each one. The header is simply the NOTAM number itself and its type, new, replaced, or cancelled. If you ever need to talk to someone about a NOTAM, you should always reference the number, such as L3501-21. The standard sections follow the header, each one beginning with its letter code and a closing parentheses. The first one is the Q section. And strangely, this one isn't usually visible to us humans. 
It is a codified summary of the rest of the stuff in the NOTAM and is intended mostly for automated systems. It includes a classification code, such as restriction or warning, and the definition of a simple, well, bounding circle, shall we call it, locating the area in question. Drone Pilot Canada version 2.7 uses information in this Q section to determine which NOTAMs to show on the map, in airspace assessments, and in flight plans. Section A gives the applicable FIR, flight information region, or the specific aerodrome, and sometimes both. Section B is the starting date and time for the NOTAM in UTC time. Similarly, Section C is when the NOTAM expires. NOTAMs are not extended if they continue to apply after their expiry date. Instead, they are replaced with another NOTAM with a new number and a different date range. Section D is the time range when the NOTAM is applicable during the day, and it's an optional section. You won't always see a Section D. Now, Section E is the main text of the NOTAM. You must read this section to determine what the NOTAM is and how it applies to you. The section is a mix of plain English and, in Canada, is also available in French, plus a profusion of abbreviated terms. I'll give you a list of some of the more obscure but important ones in a few minutes. Sections F and G are optional sections that indicate the lower and upper altitude limits for the NOTAM. For drones, seeing the code SFC for surface is the key thing to watch for. Altitudes are normally shown in feet above sea level. Okay, now let's get into some of the details for each of these sections. The header section is pretty straightforward. Here's an example NOTAM number. It consists of a single letter, called the series letter, followed by a sequence number, then a slash, and the last two digits of the year. The word NOTAM follows the number with a single letter suffix. N means the NOTAM is new. R means it replaces another NOTAM. And in the case of an R, then the NOTAM being replaced will be listed right after that. C means the NOTAM is cancelled. You might also see a NOTAM J. J is a code indicating a runway condition NOTAM, which obviously isn't very useful for drone pilots. In our example, NOTAM L3501-21 replaces NOTAM L3484-21. Section A of the NOTAM is the IKO code for either the FIR or the aerodrome the NOTAM applies to. In some cases, it could apply to multiple locations, and these would simply be listed out. Very straightforward. Sections B and C are the from and to dates for the NOTAM. In other words, when it is in effect. The format looks bewildering, but it is simply two digits each for the year, month, day, hour, and minute. And note that it is always in UTC or Zulu time. So 21070821562156 means just before midnight Zulu time on July the 8th, 2021. The end date is in the same format, but sometimes has an EST after it, denoting an estimated end date. Do not confuse EST with Eastern Standard Time. And the end date sometimes says PERM, meaning permanent. This is used when something like an airport facility or service is changing permanently, and the NOTAM is being used to basically bridge the gap between the effective date of the, of the change and the next edition of the DAH or CFS document. This is a good time to talk about lead times for NOTAMs which becomes important if you're pre-planning a flight. Depending upon the particular trigger for the NOTAM, the lead time can be anywhere from 6 hours to 14 days. And of course, if the NOTAM is due to something unplanned, like a forest fire for example, the NOTAM will be raised immediately, with no advance notice. The main point here for drone pilots is that you should check for temporary airspace restrictions such as air shows, 7 to 14 days in advance. They won't show before that 14-day point. And of course, you should check again 
on the day of your flight. Moving on, you'll notice that this example doesn't have a section D, so I'll use another example that does. Section D is an optional section that indicates a range of times that the NOTAM will be in effect. If there's no section D, the NOTAM is in effect for the entire duration of its active date range. The section D is generally written using plain English, such as in this case, where a range of dates and varying times are basically spelled out. Remember that the times will be in UTC. I've also seen cases where the codes SS for sunset and SR for sunrise are used. Let's move to section E, which is the main text of the NOTAM. Fortunately, most of this section is in plain English or French. Unfortunately, it can also be riddled with abbreviations that you might not be familiar with. So let's go through some of this. If the main text starts with pursuant to Canadian Aviation Regulations Section 5.1, or pretty much any of the 601 numbers, like in this case, you should perk your ears up because this is likely a temporary flight restriction. It will be followed by some keywords like forest fire in our example, or air show or things of that nature. A precise location or boundary will be designated using a set of lat long coordinates. These are in degrees, minutes and seconds format, but without any of the symbols. So this first one should be interpreted as 51 degrees, 35 minutes, 21 seconds north. Often they indicate a nearby aerodrome as well for easier reference. Aerodrome is abbreviated AD, by the way. So in this case, the center of the zone is about 16 nautical miles southeast of Green Lake Aerodrome. Now, in our example, the specified zone is roughly a pentagon defined by five points. On automated systems, a bounding circle will highlight the area, but the actual official boundary is what's defined within this main text. A bounding circle is a circle that completely encloses all the points defined in the official boundary and will always be, if you think about it, a bit larger than the official NOTAM area. Unless you are certain though, you should simply respect the bounding circle if you're planning a drone flight. Just stay out of that circle. NOTAM bounding circles are displayed right on the map in Drone Pilot Canada version 2.7 and you can tap on the circle to get the full story for the NOTAM. The rest of the text in section E will provide details of the NOTAM. Watch particularly for words like all ACFT, which means all aircraft, including drones. Sometimes they do specifically mention drones, but all ACFT still means drones. Abbreviations. There are about 250 officially recognized abbreviations listed in the NAV Canada NOTAM operating procedure document. And by the way, I've, I've put a link to that document in the description below. And I've picked out 36 that are either obscure or maybe pertinent in some way to drone pilots. So here, here they are. Now, be sure to note ACFT is for aircraft. AD is for aerodrome, as I mentioned earlier. CTC is for contact, as in contact the airport. RDO means radio, SFC is surface as in the ground, and U slash S means unserviceable, which is a fancy way of saying whatever they're talking about is busted. You'll see U slash S a lot for no TAMs about lights, meaning, well, they aren't working. Okay, the last two no TAM sections are F and G. These are optional sections specifying the lower and upper altitude limits for the, for the NOTAM. Pretty much self-explanatory. In our example, the NOTAM applies from the surface to 6,000 feet above mean sea level. If it says surface, by the way, it will apply to drone flights. So you really don't have to worry about trying to figure out the math of what that upper altitude limit is in feet above ground level, which would make more sense to you. If it says surface as the lower level, it will apply to you no matter what. So there we have it. How to find and read NOTAMs. They aren't really that hard once you get the hang of the eight sections and how to decode stuff like the dates. 
I recommend you take the time to pull up NOTAMs regularly and just try to decode them for fun and practice. Drone Pilot Canada version 2.7 shows flight restriction and warning NOTAMs visually right on the map to help you out. And of course, you must always check for NOTAM flight restrictions before your drone flight. You do not want to be the jerk who grounds the firefighting team. With that, I'll sign off. Safe and happy flying.